everybody from the world's largest truck stop, Iowa 80. In Iowa. Pretty empty here now, right? Remember how many trucks were here yesterday? Every single spot was full. I had to circle the lot for a while until I could find a spot to park. The building is right behind here. Now I'm just quickly running in for a coffee. I've got to go get my freight, so we can't do a full tour of the building right now. But one of these days, I really do want to take you on like, I, I got to dedicate a whole video to that boat. I was telling you that yesterday, it's so big. You've got to dedicate a whole video to this place. It's amazing. spent too much time in there I've got to get going but there's so much more to show you I showed you like the, the chrome shop area the, the accessory area there's like a huge massive food court in there there's a there's a restaurant driver lounge upstairs a huge convenience store obviously a gift store across the street there's a trucking museum it just goes on and on and on and you're just surrounded by people who love the same things that you do. It's amazing, what a feeling. I love this place. Iowa 80. If you haven't been here yet, I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, make sure you put it on your list of places to stop when you're traveling through Iowa on the I-80. Don't miss it. They didn't tell me to say that either. I'm telling you, just this is for me. You wanna come? And we are off to the races, loaded and gone. So I am gonna stay with this load. I got it on my trailer behind me. I'll show you in a second. It's front end loaders, uh, green ones, because we came from Iowa, obviously. We're still in Iowa. Six drops, 
Look at this one. Three in Saskatchewan, three in Alberta. I'm going home for a reset so that my hours, I don't gotta worry about running out of hours next week. And as soon as my reset is complete, first thing Monday morning, we're gonna be taking off with this load towards Saskatchewan. And we're ending off in Alberta near Edmonton. And they're working on getting me a reload next week after this trailer's empty. Right now, what are we on here, US 20? Oh, excuse me. We're about to turn, well, in about a half hour, we're gonna turn northbound onto Interstate 35, up north towards Minneapolis, St. Paul. I've got, well, it's about 1,300 kilometers from Davenport back home. And now I've got about 1,075 kilometers. Well, about 600 and 650 miles. I'm not gonna make it home tonight. So we'll sleep somewhere, uh, probably around Alexandria to Fargo, somewhere in there. That's what I'm thinking. And then tomorrow morning we'll wake up and go the rest of the way. Just go straight home, have a nice reset, get some stuff done, and then carry on. I feel good after being at Iowa 80. You know, I don't know what it is. It just gives you like just a rush of dopamine or something. You walk in there, it's just, wow. I mean, if those places were all over the, all over the country and every, you know, you passed one every day, they wouldn't be as special, right? Though it would be nice to have an Iowa 80 on every highway. Like in, how about like a, a Minnesota 94? How about that? Or a, uh, a North Dakota 29. That'd be nice. Or how about a Trans Canada 1? Somewhere near Winnipeg. Like a Winnipeg Trans Canada. Can you imagine having a big truck stop like that? It wouldn't be the same in Canada. You know, I, I love I love it up there, but trucking down in the US is just it's something different. Man. Minneapolis, you have to yield. You must yield. And he's got his high beams on too. So many people don't understand how these on-ramps work. If you're on the on-ramp, you must yield to traffic already on the highway. Just like here, when I get up here, if there's traffic there, I have to yield to traffic already on the highway. So many people think they can just whip around here and just whoop stick their nose right into traffic. I'm getting mad at you. Looks like we'll be good. Right on. Between Alexandria and Fargo, I think. Maybe Fergus Falls. I don't know. Maybe Alexandria, because I gotta have a shower. I just don't know if I'm gonna get a parking spot there because we're getting there quite late. See what happens. I'm gonna stop in St. Cloud though. Fuel up. Some cheap juice. And we'll make our decision from there. I have four hours, 37 minutes available to me right now, but if I stop for another half hour, on my four, or on my 11 hours of driving, I actually have about five hours and 10 minutes. So if I stop for a half hour, I'll get that hour back in drive time. I don't know if I wanna stop for a half hour. I don't think that'll really benefit me at all. 
I'll probably just run this clock down as far as I dare and then uh, see where we're at and just spend the night there. I guess I'm going a little slow, eh? Speed limit here is 60, right? I'm doing 55. That's okay. I'm doing 55. Nothing wrong with doing 55. There's lots of lanes. There's three other lanes people can use. Well, I don't know why they can't figure it out. Oh, that lane's ending. Oh, hey, well, don't pass me on that side. There we go. We're doing 56 according to that little speed counter there. Looks like Minneapolis is getting a little bit of a facelift on the 494. A bit of construction. You got these orange flowers there. I call them highway flowers. They grow on the highway in the summertime. Easy, bud. You stay in your lane there. Hey, I'll stay in mine, you stay in yours. Oh, my lane's ending. Oh. Oh, never mind, never mind. No, it's not. See, that's confusing. That is very confusing. What's going on? Okay. Stay in my lane. That's a confusing construction zone right there. Why is there so much traffic on the road? It's like 11 o'clock at night. Where are all you people going? Better not all be driving home from the bar. What other reason is there to be out at this time of night? Nothing good happens after the sun goes down. <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face. <laughs> Sound like a grandpa when I say that. Okay, so this lane ends. I'm gonna get in this lane now. There we go. We got this. We got this. See, that's that's why we're keeping it, taking it easy. There we go. Okay. End of work zone. Crazy. Wow. That was intense. Lots of fun. Still, why are there so many people on the road? Minneapolis. You got a lot of night owls out here. You gotta come get your people. Tell them to go to bed. They're on the highway. They're in my way. Bunch of party animals. In St. Cloud, Minnesota. And these pumps are still packed. Though I'm pretty sure these are all guys that are just sitting here doing nothing. There's no lineup behind us really, but there's one guy who's in the pump backwards over there. Chaos. That's how you know you're in St. Cloud. St. Cloud Pilot. St. Cloud is a nice town. It's a nice city. I don't think the chaos of this truck stop represents or is a reflection of the city itself. It's a very nice city. This is where we went for that walk through the forest over there. It's a beautiful city. Just the pilot here is just, it's a bad layout. I mean, it's not their fault, I guess. It's just how it was built. Here's my load I haven't showed you yet, eh? There it is. It's all still there. All going out to Saskatchewan and Alberta. 133 US gallons. Price was $3.60. Oh, camera's not picking that up, is it? Oh, there it is. With today's conversion rates, that would be $1.26 per liter, Canadian. Quieted down real quick now. Now I'm the only person awake around here and the only one at the pumps now. Odd for this location. It was kind of nice, it's quiet. So I bought 133 US gallons, as you saw, that equals 503 liters. <clears throat> Last time I filled up was at St. Cloud here, uh, two days ago. 
So we drove 1,382 kilometers or 858 miles. Like I said, burnt 133 gallons, 503 liters. That equals 36.43 liters per 100 kilometers or 6.46 miles per US gallon. Total price was 478.67 US or with the conversions, 635.87 Canadian. Now the price back home is uh, in St. Agath, it's $1.639 per liter. Here with conversions, it's $1.26.3 per liter. Saved myself 190 Canadian dollars by fueling here as opposed to fueling in Canada. I keep pointing that out so that hopefully somebody who has some control over this realizes that fuel in Canada is ridiculously expensive compared to right next door. All of these extra taxes we've been adding on to it is just forcing our business down into the US. And now the American fuel companies are making money off of us instead of the Canadian ones. Saved $190 in one fill up. Filled up two days ago. <clears throat> so in two days, every two days I'd save almost $200. That's $100 per day that I'm saving fueling up in the US. That's how crazy the taxes have gotten on fuel. And remember, those taxes have gone up recently again too. On July 1st, the carbon tax went up. And it hasn't reduced any of my emissions or anything, but it has taken food, uh, food off my table and has taken money out of my bank account that I could use towards a house for my family. Even though housing in Canada has gotten ridiculously unaffordable as well. Everything in Canada has become more and more unaffordable over the last eight years. Anyways, this all stemmed for, uh, from fuel prices here in the US, less taxes, lower money, more money in my bank account. I can use that to feed my family and hopefully put a roof over, a bigger roof over our head one day, at least pay for the roof we got right now. I really wish it was the other way around. I wish our money was going to Canadian companies and spending money up there. I'm getting tired. Dabbling in topics that, you know what? I should save for another day. I'll talk to you when we're done. Just got another couple hours to go here. So I made it to Sauk Center, Minnesota. About 800 kilometers done today, about 500 miles. Could have kept going, but it's getting pretty late. It's after midnight already, and uh, I'm not gonna be able to sleep very well in the morning because it's gonna get hot when the sun comes up. So, uh, figure I stop early. We'll just get up a little earlier tomorrow, and uh, as soon as the logs say I can get moving, we'll do the rest then. Then I'm heading home uh, for that reset that I was talking about. So thanks for hanging out with me today, everybody. Uh, we're at the Trucker's Inn, I believe is what it's called. A lot of trucks here. Another one rolling in right there. Beautiful. I love those, uh, I don't know if you can see it in the video. Like a almost steel side to the trailer. You see that? I think that looks awesome. Sharp. So I'll see you tomorrow right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. We'll see you later.